For those of you who are taking Writing One, just a reminder that we're to complete our first paragraph, our first text for week one, December 13th through the 18th. Remember that part of the writing process is to receive feedback from me after you've completed the brainstorming list, the outline, and the paragraph itself. So I want to go over, uh, looking at this example here, the kind of things to think about and the way that I'm going to be approaching uh, the feedback when I receive your text to review. So the first thing here, you have your title. If you're going to include a title, just include uh, or just make sure to capitalize only the main words. Okay, so in this case, you want to capitalize the word human, activity, making, earth, worse, place, and live. Remember that Headings are centered to the page. There's no punctuation at the end. It is in bold, which it is here. Now, the brainstorming list we have, you can list it horizontally as it appears here or vertically if you want to list it. And then the outline. Remember that the outline should be at least three levels. Now, what I mean by three levels, as an example, you can start with Roman numeral. Personally, that's how I like to have my first level or level one um, level one heading. If you want to think of an outline, when I say three levels, think of it as headings or three level headings. Use here, let me change this to Roman numerals. Okay, so we have our level one. This is also a level one heading. Now, of course, this will include topic one, topic two, and topic three. Remember that our topics will include or should include words or phrases. In fact, I would say word, phrases between three to six words is typically uh, a ballpark. You know, it's a good, uh, a good number to think about. You don't want to have a lot of text. And for the purposes of this assignment, I'm not, not asking for a sentence outline, which is certainly one way of doing an outline, but for our purposes, I would rather us have a phrase, a phrasal outline, if you will. So, again, phrases, think of three to six word phrases, I think will be uh, sufficient. This will be applicable to each of the three. Now, this is a level one outline so far, but we need to have three levels. So, here we might have, we would have a level two heading. And for the purposes of this, for this example, I'll include three here. Maybe I have two here. Now you, I'm not sure if you're aware of how to, how outlines work here in, in Microsoft Word, but notice that I'm using the, the outline feature in Word in that to indent and outdent, I'm using the tab key. Okay, so again, if I just hit enter, in fact, let me delete this. So I hit enter and then I hit the tab and then it indents one space. If I hit shift tab, it outdents. So you can indent and outdent. I'm not hitting the space bar. I'm not creating manually these indentations. I'm using Microsoft, the, the feature within Microsoft, just to keep it well, number one, it's just easier to do. And number two, it just, it keeps the format intact. It keeps it looking all, everything's lined up as it should be. All right, so in this case, I'll have, let's say, two headings here. And that's a level two heading. Now we want to extend it now to a level three. Notice again, I just hit enter and then the tab and it automatically creates these letters or numbers, okay? So... Again, I started with Roman numeral. I'm just using the feature in Microsoft Word. If you want to use, start with a cardinal number here. If you like a cardinal number with a, a paren afterwards, that's fine. You can choose any of these. It doesn't really matter uh, to me which format you use, but choose one and then just stick with whatever Word is automatically uh, implementing there as you are drafting your outline. So now we're going to have a level three heading. Okay, so notice here in this case, this outdented for whatever reason. 
So here what we can do is just hit tab. I just put the cursor right before this line and then hit the tab and then I'm okay. So I'll do the same here. And, and notice it popped back out. It outdented for some reason. So I just put the cursor back and force that indentation. Again, I'm just doing this quickly by copying and pasting, but you'll probably just tab or, or type it all out. If I'm going to type this out, it's even easier. I just hit tab, level, three heading. And all of these actually are level three. Okay, so I should have done that first. Okay, so these are all level three headings. Level three heading and so on. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm just, just for the sake of this example, I'm going to copy and paste what I have here. For each of the three sections. Okay, just again, this is just as, a, as an example. And we'll do this here for this. All right, now, your outline doesn't have to look exactly like this. Here, here is what I would suggest. Notice level one, we have three topics. Level one, level one, level one. Within this first section, the level two, we have one, two, three and for these level three we have two examples so again this is an example but you can have as long as you have at least two ideas or topics per level that's fine so for example instead of three level ones that i have here i could have two level one and then build out however many level twos and level three items that i need also, level two, I have three examples here, but I could, I could have just two level two. But just make sure you have at least two ideas for each level. Here I have two level threes, which is a minimum. I could have three level threes, might even have four level threes. The idea here is you're probably going to need more level threes if you only have, let's say, two level twos and two level ones, if that makes sense. The whole point here, guys, is to make sure that you have details. This is what we're reaching. This is what we want to get to, this level three, because this is what you're going to be including in your paragraph. We want details. And how do we get to details? Well, we need to go through this process of outlining to number one, see how we're going to order or organize our ideas, number one. And then number two, how we're going to present the details or what are the details that we're going to present. And we need to go through this process so that our details, again, these are, are this, the level three headings are going to be our best source of evidence or details or support that later will be discussed in our paragraphs. Okay, so we're going to need three uh, level three headings for our paragraph. Now, based on what you have here, now in this example, honestly, this is probably too long for the purposes of one paragraph. It really depends on how you organize your sentences. But the whole idea with the outline is to only include in your outline what you later plan to include in your paragraph. Now, once you develop your paragraph, or as you're developing your paragraph, you might decide later or in the process of writing to modify the outline. Maybe you need to add information. Maybe you need to take some information away. Maybe you have some details here that you later decide that you don't need to include or don't want to include in your paragraph. And that's fine, but always go back and make sure that you remove, or again, maybe you add information as you need to. All right, so the outline really is to give you a roadmap, to give you an idea about how you want to organize your ideas, how you want to present your ideas in your paragraph. But at the end of the day, when you finish your paragraph, this might, and it's probably likely that you'll need to go back and modify your outline. Because as you're writing, a lot of times we're still reflecting on what we want to say. Even though we might have a good idea or we should have a good idea, 
by using her outline, the paragraph still in the writing process, we're still thinking and reflecting. And when we're writing our first draft, you know, and especially that first attempt, when you're writing your paragraph for the first time, you're basing your ideas from your outline, but you're really just trying to get your ideas down. You're not worried about grammar, punctuation, or capitalization. You're just trying to present your ideas in a logical way based on your outline. Once you've completed your first draft, then you go back and start to revise or review again, revise it. You're still not focusing too much on grammar. You're still just reflecting on the organization, how your ideas are connecting. And when you're revising your text after you've created your first draft, you're looking at specifically how ideas flow from one sentence to the next. Maybe you're using transitions like, let's say, introductory phrases, like prepositional phrases or participial phrases. Maybe you're using sentence connectors. Maybe you're beginning sentences with subordinating clauses to connect the idea from the prior sentence to the, to the current sentence. But this is what I would be focusing on when you're revising your, your text. Now, once you have, you're happy with the way that your ideas are organized and presented, and you feel that your ideas are flowing from one idea to the next, then you can go and make final edits. Then you're checking for punctuation, capitalization. Maybe you're even looking at word choice. Maybe you want to use a thesaurus to find some good synonyms for words that you are maybe repeating too often. Right, so for example, in this paragraph, we we want to try to over we want to avoid overusing the verb to be. Number one, number two, in the first sentence, try to create a good topic sentence that number one doesn't include the verb to be, probably doesn't include the verb to have. Those are two verbs that we tend to overuse. And if we can find other dynamic verbs, then we usually end up with a better topic sentence. And number two, the second aspect of a good topic sentence, in my view, is having a topic sentence that speaks about one specific point. Now, in this case, there's a, you have a good start. We have that uh, pollution is a, a global problem. But maybe we can ex expand a little bit more this, this, this idea, because remember that the whole point here is only to develop one paragraph. So the paragraph is to talk about a specific idea. So maybe we can expand this, this global problem. When is it a problem? Why is it a problem? When is it a problem? With whom is it a problem? Think of the question words when you're thinking about how you can approach looking at a topic sentence and making it more specific. The question words oftentimes will help us kind of reflect and think, well, what else can I say about this topic? Again, in one sentence, trying to make it more specific. Now, of course, we can go too far when we're developing a topic sentence and be too specific, right? By just including too many clauses and phrases and adjectives and just too much information in one sentence. But oftentimes, uh, learners will err on the side of being too specific when it comes to developing a topic sentence that is appropriate for a single paragraph. And I think in this case, uh, this example of a topic sentence falls into that category. Maybe we can be more specific. Now, finally, the last thing I'll say here, for the purposes of the four paragraphs that you're asked to complete for this course, I'm not asking that you include any information from an outside source. In fact, I would try not to include any information from an outside source. This should all be anecdotal. This should all be your opinions. And basically answer the question that you chose for the prompt, for the writing prompt for this assignment, and stick with that. Uh, last couple of things here. I would avoid the future tense. You can write in the present tense or the past tense and try to avoid the phrase there is, there are. So uh, I hope this helps. Uh, one other thing, sorry. One other thing I would probably suggest is to use the editor in Microsoft uh, Word. Once you've completed your paragraph, select it and, and run an editor to see what kind of information you get. 
Anytime you're referring to the editor, though, and you're not sure how to make those changes, this can either be a question that you pose to me as your instructor, or maybe you look online if there's something that comes up. But a lot of times you'll have observations here that you can ignore. So I would ignore, for example, punctuation. I would ignore, well, this one I would change because we want to avoid a punctuation mark, any kind of punctuation mark after a heading. But here I would probably, I mean, technically we want an outline with phrases, so you're not going to need to include any punctuation after each of the phrases that you include in your level, in your three levels, in your three level heading or outline, I should say. Here though, once you get into the text, notice here that it's detecting the serial commas. So anytime that you create a list, which is what you have here, we do need to include the serial comma. This is different than Spanish where the serial comma is not necessary. Uh, in English, we're going to be using the uh, serial comma as it is uh, part of uh, APA rules. We want to include a comma just before the coordinating conjunction and. So in this case, after the word water, we want to include a comma. All right, I hope this helps. Make sure that you're requesting feedback in time to meet the deadline for completing the writing assignment. If anybody has any questions, feel free to post those in Microsoft Teams or you can send me a, a private chat in Teams as well. And we'll stop there. I look forward to seeing your text.